As long as I was going after the crooks that didn't have badges, I was everybody's hero. Vic, it's uh, it's so good to see you. We're 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 back in person. We are in person, John. About six feet. We're about we're right at six feet apart. Did you know the uh, looks like the X Men have a new character? Yeah, it's you. Uh, Look at that hair. You look like Wolverine again. (laughs) Wolverine Gray. Oh man, (laughs) the Gray Wolverine. (laughs) Well, what's crazy is your your color is coming back. It was gray and it's starting to brown out again. Yeah, I know. You're like this Benjamin Button character now. I've lost uh, since the lockdown. At first, I did a lot of anxiety eating, and I gained about six pounds. And then I said, I got to get a handle on this. So my wife and I decided to do intermittent fasting. Right. We eat breakfast now. Since I'm not having to go anywhere, we eat breakfast right after the Law Offices of Vic Fizzell Zoom staff meeting. Hey. Every morning at 10, we all get together, <laughs> talk about what happened and what we're going to do. True. And uh, and so right, right after that, we have breakfast at about 10.30. And then by 6.30, we don't eat anything else. Really? Yeah. And that's it? You just cut it off? Mm-hmm. Just cut it off. We have a narrow window, and it gives your body a chance to cleanse yeah. without you starving yourself. Right. But we've been watching our calories, and I've been walking. Uh, in the month of May, I walked 100 miles. Oh well, actually, 99.8. <laughs> uh, but I did some my phone didn't pick up. <laughs> and then in the month of uh, June so far, I've walked 50 52, something like that. That's crazy. Yeah. Without ever leaving my driveway. Ah, I go back and forth, back and forth. But I have a long driveway. I live way out in the country. You do? You do? Out in the hinterlands. You do? Yeah. You have all sorts of weird, weird animal life. We do. Bobcats, foxes. The snakes. uh, I think I scared those damn snakes. They're not coming around (laughs) anymore. I, I killed a bunch of them. I know you did. One was climbing up the pillar that holds up the, the my front porch roof. Yeah. Uh, to get to a little bird nest up there. That's crazy. I'm man. inside and I see this like seven foot snake. I put it on uh, on Facebook. This was last year, a year before. Yeah. And uh, Cece videoed me through the uh, through the window. Yeah, she's uh, not she's not coming out for this. It wasn't coming out for no. that. No, I went out there with a with a little square tip shovel. And I got that thing as it was slithering up the pole. God. And me and that snake had a battle for a little while. Did you? We did. It oh, reminded man. me of my, my, my younger days uh, in Leander, 1966, 67, 68, when Leander, Texas was a small town. Right. Small town. Yeah. So right. glad to be back, Jonathan. I have missed seeing your face. Yeah, I have here missed it is. this studio. I know, man. We have such a cool setup. We do. Now, I miss the, the video quality and the sound quality. Yeah, man. And you and I both are playing it really safe. I yeah, haven't that's true. eaten out since the lockdown. See? I've gotten takeout a couple times, but even now with the cases back on the rise, we said no to that. Yeah, I know. I know. But people are still out there willy-nilly, man. Yeah. You see this? Like you go to a H-E-B grocery store, and people are like probably one in maybe five has a mask on. Everybody else is just boo. I walk in with my mask on, and people look at me like I'm either crazy or about to rob the place. <laughs> you know, I, I've got this cool mask. It, it, I'm not going to put it on, but it slips all the way over my head so yeah. I can wear it like a scarf. Yeah, there you go. You know, just Styling. like an old uh, bandana, like an old West bandana. And when I put it up over my ears, you know, yeah. stick them up. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I went into the uh, GMC dealership. Those are some good guys over there here in Waco. Yeah. I uh, went in there this morning. I had to drop my truck off, and then my wife brought me over here so you and I could record. And I walk in with this, and they're all like, <laughs> are we <laughs> being robbed? I we said, don't have anything Stick them up. Guns. <laughs> Give me all the keys you got. <laughs> I can only drive one, but I want them all. Yeah, I like my GMC. My dad likes my GMC because he says GMC stands for God, Mother, and Country. Is that right? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, Fred. Yeah. Care. What we got today, Jonathan? Well, we uh, we just got done with two episodes on your dear friend Walter Smith. Oh, Wally, yeah. Now, if we can't, if you're telling me we're not friends anymore, I just don't know oh, if I can go on. <laughs> Doc Holliday. No, Walter and I were never friends. Never, oh, never, never, never. I would not stoop to that. Uh, but yeah, 
We, we did two back to back because on episode one, which aired Tuesday, right. Uh, I, I spent a lot of time on the wind up, you know, I spent way too much time on the wind up, you know, just like I'm doing right now. <laughs> and then, uh, so we decided to post part two today. Right. So it's airing right now right. while you and I are recording this, which will air probably tomorrow. And what we're going to talk about today is just adding a little information to what was left out. Sure. Uh, one thing is that I remembered after I, I, we quit recording that I did forgive Mike Gassaway. Right. You know, I remember I said, I don't remember what ju if Judge Mike Gassaway did anything. Well, he didn't really, his testimony didn't hurt us at all in Below. It was pretty neutral. Yeah, I wouldn't go neutral, I but it, it wasn't bad. Because he and I had had issues too while I was DA. Uh, and I forgave him for that while I was forgiving everybody else. But when we get to the Lake Waco triple murders, mm -hmm. then, and we, we might get to that by the end of this year. Sure. You know, because we've got a lot of other topics to cover on, on, on the deep stuff. state versus Vic Fazell. Uh But yeah, uh, during the, it was either during the trial or right before the first David Spence trial, mm -hmm. uh, Russ Hunt, who is David Spence's uh, lawyer, you know, he's the one who wrote the, wrote me the email saying, I'm not going to watch this uh, Netflix, yeah. The Confession Killer, because it, it'll make you look good and that'll nauseate me. <sighs> That's okay, Russ. I get it. I understand. But Russ went to Mike Gasway, who's judge of a county court at law, not right. a district court right, that handles county. felonies, a county court at law that only handles misdemeanors. Right. And Russ got uh, Judge Gasway to give him a subpoena and not just a little subpoena for somebody to come down to the Waco courthouse, what's called a subpoena ducis tecum. Mm -hmm. That's some Latin that means, it's a subpoena that means you gotta bring me what I'm asking for. Right. And right. it was a subpoena to be served in California where we don't even have jurisdiction. And right. they sent that subpoena to their forensic odontologist, their uh, expert dentist who's gonna look at bite marks on David Spence. Because mm -hmm. Russ had a suspect who was in prison in California. And they mailed that subpoena to their expert dentist. And he drove to the prison, bluffed his way in with that subpoena, and took dental impressions. No way. Which came to, as a big surprise to my office. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. And it came as a big surprise to District Judge George Allen, too. He oh, wasn't too crazy I about somebody stepping on his jurisdictional toes. Wow. And, and I couldn't believe that the prison out in California was so loose that they would take a county court at law subpoena. So anyway, I got upset about that, and I, I filed a grievance on uh, Gasway for that because it just shouldn't happen. And, and as usual, you know, the judges police the judges, so nothing happened. Just like the police policing the police. You know, that shouldn't be. We need some outside, yeah, man. Uh, outside uh, regulation. We need some outside investigations. Not the police investigating it and say, oh, this, this case was, this shooting was justified. Because now we're seeing case after case after case where it wasn't justified. Yeah, man. Another thing I wanted to add to the, uh, oh, let me tell a funny story about Mike Gasway if I can. You, it doesn't involve you, gas. You may. You may. It's when uh, I was running for re-election while under indictment. Oh, God, that was a tough election. And I was up in West Station, a uh, little town north of here, West Texas. Okay. And I say I always say West Station because that was the old name. Because if you really? say West Texas, people think you're talking about Amarillo. Right, like know? actual West. But no, this is just uh, 15 miles up IH-35 from Waco. And I was up there shaking hands and campaigning on the sidewalk and walking in the cafes and the kolache shops and all that, handing out cards. And back then, you know, I was there in my race, and I had put on some weight, like we were talking about. And I was, I was about the size of my gas weight then. He was, he was a little heavy, and he had a mustache. Well, I was a little heavy, and I had a mustache. Oh, here and we I'm go. And I'm walking around handing out cards, and I see a guy walking up the sidewalk toward me. And he goes... Like he recognizes me and he comes over and he sticks his hand out and he says, Judge Gassaway, it's so good to see it. Don't you worry. I'm going to vote for you. Oh, wow. And I said, I sure appreciate that. And don't you forget to vote for my good friend, Vic Fazell, oh, too. Oh, man. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> wow. So that, that's my funny Mike Gassaway story. But I don't have anything against Mike. I, I like Mike. Uh, 
he, he even does some visiting judging here in uh, Waco sometimes. He's retired now. Oh, wow. And I never hear any complaints about Mike Gasway. He's on time, and he, he uh, I hear that he's fair. Yeah. Uh, so good for you, Mike. And I, I forgive you, and I hope you've forgiven me because I know I stepped on your toes a lot too. There you go. Another thing I wanted to add was that attorney Jeff Kearney, uh, up in Fort Worth. Yeah, yeah. When I said that uh, Gary Richardson came down for my election, yeah. uh, Jeff Kearney came down too because he was also representing me at that time. Right. He didn't go to trial with us because Jeff's uh, an expensive lawyer and, you know, he, he's good. And I just didn't have the money to pay him. Yeah. And, and plus, I was a lawyer on the case. Uh, I, I was assisting Gary in my own defense. I had every file, every box, every document memorized. And by the before yeah. he could even ask the question, I was handing him the document, you know, with wow. a little colored file. And when the jury saw me reaching the file box on the floor, well, they would sit up and take notice because they knew Gary was about to slap that guy, you know. <laughs> That's funny. So, yeah. But anyway, Jeff Kearney came down, too. And this is taken from uh, the night Vic found out he won re-election while under indictment. As a matter of fact, let's hear what he had to say. Thank you for waiting up with me till two o'clock. It's been worth the wait, hasn't it? I've got some good friends who'll stay up with me this late. Yes. Who'll get out in the rain and vote for me. Yeah. That's right. Pray for me for the past 18 months. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, Carlton. Brother Collier, my staff, my friends, thank you for being here. That's all right. I've been running against the entire system. And I think most of the people of this state will know that this is not a victory for, the, for just Vic Fazell. Mm -hmm. This is a victory for the people, That's for right. the people of the state of America. And I've got to say something because I would be remiss if I didn't. But I give all the credit in this to God. That's right. Amen. The prayers of all the people who have prayed me through this and who will pray me through the next battle. And I tell you what, something else is happening too. It shows that the voters of this county cannot be fooled by what's been going on that's right. and by this trumped up job that's been put on me and these trumped up charges. It's shown the people that we are in danger of becoming a police state. We are in danger of abuses of the grand jury system. We are in danger of abuses from the Justice Department and from people who think they are so high and mighty that they will put their thumb down on the average folks who are willing to stand up and say, wait a minute, that's not what America's about. America's about doing what's right. Praise God. The voters of McLennan County, I give them credit for seeing through this. They saw through it, they knew there was nothing to it, and that jury is gonna see the same thing. I yeah! And now let's get back to more on Jeff Kearney. Yeah, and Jeff did a really good job. And after, uh, pretty soon we're going to get into what we call the monster motion. Monster mash. Yeah, because it was about this thick. And it has a lot of affidavits on it about all the prosecutorial misconduct of Assistant U.S. Attorney Jan Patterson. Yes. And how unethical her behavior was. And he drafted that. I, I got... I did the legwork to get the affidavits because people had called me telling me these things. Yeah. And, uh, and then Jeff did the legal work and put together a fabulous motion that I really believe was the reason Patterson was finally taken off the case. Yeah. Hi, I'm Vic Fazell. During these trying times, you might want to just stay home. And at the Law Offices of Vic Fazell, we understand. That's why we're set up to handle your personal injury claim without you even having to come in. Just give us a call and we'll take it from there. We can send any paperwork straight to your smartphone or computer. Don't delay, because if we don't put money in your pocket, you don't owe us anything. I'm Vic Fazell.